special NewsX and Business World panels on the Indian economy. Yes, uh, it's that time of the evening when we, of course, speak to entrepreneurs and uh, corporate leaders on the current state of the Indian economy and how to get back on track uh, to, of course, the high growth that uh, we've been seeing for quite a while now. Uh, let me uh, bring in uh, our guests on the broadcast. Joining us today is Jitin Singh, co-founder and CEO, E. Jori. Chinmay Tripathi, founder, singer, composer, uh, and uh, music and uh, founder of a music and poetry project called Ambu. I beg your pardon. She's a singer and composer, and also, of course, a founder. She's also joining us live. Uh, Ambu Sharma, founder, Escaro Royal, is joining us live on the broadcast. Khandelwal is also joining us live. Co-founder, Navya Life Care, R.S. Man, uh, founder. Kodliu Consulting is also joining us live, and Dr. Anurag Batra, uh, Chairman and Editor-in-Chief Business World, is joining the panel as well at this point. Welcome, all of you, and thank you uh, uh, so much for being with us. Uh, let me uh, begin with you first, Jitain Singh, if I can. You know, how much has your sector really been impacted in the last uh, few weeks and months, and, and did the financial stimulus package actually help you, your company, your work? and others in your sector or not quite? You have to unmute yourself. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Unmute uh, is the second uh, most popular word of 2020. Uh, First uh, being COVID yeah, yeah. and the third yeah. being unmute. Thank Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah. Thank you for inviting us and share our experience in this, uh, in the current world uh, we are all going through. Uh, the industry, jewelry industry is really impacted with the COVID. Uh, you know, when the lockdown implemented, was a little panic in the mind of the consumer. Many jewelers store closed and we are being on the channel platform, uh, each already being on the channel platform. It was impacted initially. So, April, May, uh, we were not able to fulfill the orders of the customers. Uh, because jewelers stores were closed, pickup of jewelry was not possible from the jewelers and uh, the review to the consumers were not available. Uh, there were some logistics issues as well. First two months uh, really went uh, where we even stopped taking orders on the website also. But surprisingly, uh, the people spending time on our platform does not double. In fact, more than double. So people who are started discovering and researching about their product on eJory and, and e-commerce platforms more uh, uh, than they were doing earlier. So that is the one change we have seen. Uh, in, in our thing. Regarding to a stimulus package, uh, I think in jewelry industry, uh, it has not impacted very much because if you see the business wise, it is giving approximately 3 lakh rupees uh, per small business. You know, so what is can be done with the 3 lakh rupees in the jewelry store label or, or the jewelry manufacturing label, but the gold uh, is the already, you know, skyrocketing rocket in the price. Uh, you know, it has come down in last few weeks, but it has gone very high. Uh, but, but definitely at, at a carrier level, at anybody at a small level who is doing on his own, maybe this stimulus package could be helpful for them. Other thing we have seen in this uh, in this lockdown and COVID area, uh, the gold loan, the gold monetization scheme has gone very high and people are taking a lot of gold loan than they were taking earlier, maybe to match their lifestyle and to match their, uh, you know, survival of uh, their family and everything. I think that is why I think the gold is always considered to be you know the best investment uh, and because you know in the bad times this is the investment which uh, people can use i think so all, out of that i think the industry is going through with this stage but i hopefully the season is starting now we are just entering into the season and this is you know Diwali and Dashera is the biggest season of the country for the jewelry uh, we are hopeful that we will be able to uh, do a good uh, sales and uh, in last couple of weeks we have started seeing the people are uh, placing good orders Isandar, you mentioned Omni channel. Now, yeah. are consumers using technology, AR, VR, trying out yeah. jewelry and ornaments virtually? Is that happening yeah. or it's just something that you watch in sci fi movies? So it has started in the industry. Even the few jewelers have started using AR in their store also. And we are also in age or in some time we will launch. It is in our mind. Uh, for the VR, I think the AR is definitely uh, one of the very important tool is going to be for omni-channel platforms because it it covers the distance between the online experience as well as the offline experience. There is somewhere in between, high tech. So it, it okay. reduces that uh, effort. So it is definitely going to be helpful for uh, home. Then the, then I want to ask you a direct question. If yeah. we take April to September, yeah. if your normal sales last year was 100 rupees, yeah. how much was your sales this year? And I'm talking more about the industry, not necessarily talking about you, but I'm trying yeah. to see 
uh, how much was the jewelry sales impacted? So uh, it, it has very badly uh, impacted April May uh, because stores were closed. So April May there was completely almost zero sales, and even the gold import in India was reduced because of that in these two months. Uh, so first two months were really really bad for the industry. But now uh, the walk-ins have started. Uh, walk-ins no, per- give us a sense through numbers. What I want to yeah. understand from you is give us a sense through so, numbers. If you were hundred uh, there between April and September. This year, were you at? You meaning the so industry I, so at 40, 50, 20, 30? What? So, so I will say roughly 30 percent down. Uh, it would be, but uh, hopefully it will pick up in the season. Uh, you know, we are. You were at 70 percent. You were 30 percent yeah. down. You were at 70 yeah. percent. And in yeah. October, yeah. November, December, uh, yeah. what is the kind of expectation you have from this festive season? So I think it, it should come back to the normal. Uh, the reason is, as as you know, lockdown is almost over, and uh, the people, you know, hotels have started. I think very soon the betting places will also start. Al- would be allowed to accommodate more than 100 people in the betting. I think when the betting starts, I think the betting season uh, is going to give us the best of the sales. You know, uh, many people have lost their jobs, and many people have got pay cuts. So fashion jewelry and the impulsive buying of jewelry will definitely have an impact. But I think the occasion based jewelry shopping and the betting jewelry shopping will be back. Uh, uh, to normal. Thank you, Jitin. We hope you have proved right and the industry picks, you, picks up. Yeah. Every industry has a huge employment. Even if you look at the jewelry and the gold industry, downstream yeah. there are a lot of people you employ. Nupur, let me ask you, uh, what has happened to your business in the last six, seven months and where do you see it headed? Thank you. Uh, before I tell you what has happened uh, in our industry, I would like to quickly introduce my company as to what we are doing. So basically, I'm a co-founder of Navya Life Care. It's a health tech startup which helps doctors digitize prescriptions and connect with their patients through a telemedicine platform. So as you may have guessed, uh, our company were was amongst uh, very few companies who were on the positive side of the pandemic. So uh, pandemic actually was a blessing in disguise for health tech companies like ours. We saw a massive jump in terms of the number of doctors who were onboarded on the platform for obvious reasons, of course, uh, because of the lockdown rules and because of the fact that the virus could spread, uh, it was not advised that the patient should visit the hospitals uh, physically. So they started uh, contacting the doctors virtually and started using telemedicine services and so on. Uh, If I talk about the push that has also been on an institutional front, then I think government was proactive enough to understand the need of a platform like ours. And uh, they 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 actually introduced the telemedicine guidelines as soon as the uh, lockdown was announced. Uh, Also recently, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi also uh, announced uh, the launch of NDHM, which is the National Digital Health Mission, uh, to basically digitize, create a digital health stack for the entire ecosystem which is again a positive step and uh, with the right intent so uh, which is again going to give a boost to companies uh, like ours and not just the company but for uh, you know for the entire healthcare infrastructure as a whole so if you look at india and there are it's it's known to everyone that uh, there are fundamental deficit in terms of number of healthcare providers in terms of the number of hospitals we have and so on and uh, we could clearly see i mean pandemic was an eye opener for the entire industry that we were never equipped uh, to handle uh, a health crisis per se and uh, because of that reason there has been a lot of push and a lot of positives on an institutional and on an individual front and uh, talking about the recent uh, last uh, last few months because the lockdown rules have been uh, eased out and everything uh, so we initially predicted that there is going to be a drop in the activity uh, the primary reason being that telemedicine was something that was promoted uh, because there was a lockdown and because the infection should not spread but in the last few months as well the activity has been significantly high so there is a behavioral change that has happened uh, in the end user which is the doctor and they have accepted uh, digital health as a part of the care process so there have been positives uh, of course when it comes to this uh, again if i look at healthcare as a whole uh, we cannot ignore the fact that uh, we are the in terms of number of cases we are the second highest uh, in the world now and even though there is some sort of positive when it comes to the curve uh, when, look, when, when we look at the active cases curve but at the same time the confirmed number of cases on a daily basis is still around 70000 plus so there has to be more to be done on that front and at the on, same time on, on, on testing tracing and treatment right 
yes. we are doing very still relatively less testing than we should do exactly. relatively much lesser tracing than we should do exactly so i think if we solve this healthcare crisis and the fear factor that everyone has yeah. the impact on businesses and livelihood will be minimized uh, we'll bring you in but thank you for giving us a good perspective uh, yeah. let me ask mr sharma mr sharma um, tell us a bit about what your company does and how has it been impacted in the last 6 months and most importantly how do you see the immediate future uh, hi everybody um my name is ambit sharma i i come from a luxury e-commerce background my company doesn't is into luxury e-commerce um we are into men's fashion and uh, we have been uh, live for about about 4 years now and doing really good numbers in terms of you know uh, revenue and and profitability as well uh, among the very few you know profitable uh, luxury e-commerce companies in india so um, uh, from when the pandemic hit we were doing really good numbers and all of a sudden we saw a slump uh, to about maybe to your earlier question maybe 20 30% of the average revenues we were seeing in uh, in march april uh, may and june time frame right um since then we have started picking up uh, and we are probably doing about between 10 and 15% uh monthly uh you know increase in revenue and we hope to kind of get to our normal levels by december uh primarily because of the uh the incoming uh, festive season festive sales etc right we we are an independent company we don't really sell through other online platforms per se we have our own platform we have our own technologies um from an earlier uh, question as well the ar vr we are big into ar vr uh, you know uh, uh doing virtual tryouts per se uh, which has been the technologies that we developed in the last 2 years came in very handy uh, over the last uh, over the last 6 to 8 months uh we were able to cater to the customers remotely we do touchless services uh, be able to uh, you know display our uh, our products and merchandise uh, and also do a lot of customer care remotely which was typically was uh, not really happening in the luxury segment um one of the very good positives that came out uh, from this was uh, everybody understood that they had to work uh, work uh, virtually uh, you know reporting into the office was not really a, an option so we figured out how to work uh, and what are technologies to employ uh uh you know across the company to be able to work effectively uh we have been able to go ahead and uh, and hire people actually remotely which was typically was not on our horizon right right now we are hiring uh, people from brazil uh we hired a couple of people from russia we hired a couple of people from the united states uh which was typically not what was on our horizon and all of this was actually the all of these efficiencies came in due to covid so that was the positive piece right um uh, from a luxury standpoint the people who buy luxury their their uh, their needs changed a little bit but the due to the price point there was not really a lot of uh, you know uh, understanding that they had to like hold the money or they will not buy and you know they would, it's because we are into vanity we are not into necessity right so we changed our product mix a little bit to be able to cater to the people you know working in home working from home uh, you know using our products domestically rather than going out and using it right so uh, from that standpoint our business is now kind of back to normal uh, i would say about 70 80% of where it was and we hope to have a full recovery by december uh from a government guideline standpoint uh, we didn't really t- uh, you know take any stimulus or 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 as as one of the earlier gentlemen said that it was not really substantial 3 to 5 lakh rupees is not really anything uh, when it comes to you know, running an, a large enterprise that we do uh, uh but from a policy standpoint i believe that the government can help us by easing out the, uh, the you know the ease of doing business our current uh you know accounting uh you know gst filing all of that the, the overheads which come with with running a, a small enterprise and scaling it to a large enterprise is a lot i believe the government can ease that out especially in terms of covid so that uh, you know companies can survive a little better with their working time okay now you know so, ambud I, I have a, i have a question for you ambud i have a question for you bw business world luxury issue law and luxury again as you said uh there is a segment that is ambud are, are you able to hear me can i can i quickly come yes, in here? here yeah ambud yes. I, i have a question yes, on the luxury market uh you know uh, since you are of course a luxury e-commerce as well do you believe uh you know and, and the jury is out on this one that luxury markets luxury tourism luxury buying will be amongst the first to recover or or 
is it actually uh, you know the domestic uh, traveler and and perhaps the more uh, the more economical spender that will be uh, the the faster to recover which which market do you believe will recover first so there will be i i would like to address this in a two pronged approach if i may uh, the first thing that will recover is the necessity any kind of necessity will recover for example if you are looking at say travel or if you are looking at uh, at buying uh, uh, merchandise or if you are looking at uh, you know different kinds of uh, you know economic activity anything that has to do with necessity will recover first which basically means that if people have to travel on business they will travel on business and it is it is a necessity right some of the businesses so just will have to travel Uh, and yes, well, they are. I mean, many of them are taking risks and traveling because because they have to. Some of the businesses just don't have the luxury of not going and meeting your client to be able to close a deal, to be able to make a deal happen or take it to the next level. They just some of the industries just don't have that uh, that uh, luxury. The second thing is that the people, uh, the vanity will recover as well. Why vanity will recover? When I say vanity, I'm talking about uh, you know uh, fashion merchandise. I'm talking about uh, shoes and accessories. I'm talking about other things. They will recover as well because with the oncoming uh, you know festive season, people are already on the verge of you know almost like a, a mental drop. You know, with the last six months, eight months, right? They they want to be able to celebrate something. so there is puja coming up there is diwali there is uh, there is uh, good purab there is uh, uh, there is a uh, new years coming up so people will try to kind of remove that steam by uh, by buying more remember there is always uh, an uprush uh, in a human brain when you buy something new when you experience something new right so that will actually add to uh, the luxury piece or the high ticket merchandise piece as well so one thing that will recover in my opinion the latest would be uh you know the mid tier where people will actually hold the money uh to be able to buy something new something like a new scooter or a new small mm-hmm. car or uh you know by the way the two wheeler sales are already at a peak in september so right. the demand for mobility and individual mobility the in maruti sales mobility maruti sales are up 21 percent which was last september so there yep. will be categories that will see the revival let me uh, go to mr rs man Mr. Man, give us a Hi. sense of uh, where have you been in the last six months in terms of your business, and where do you see it going for the next three to six months? Perfect. So, so just to first quickly check, are you able to hear me properly? Yes. Yes, Mr. Man. Perfect. Thank you. So, my name is R S Man. I'm from Colio Consulting. We are the digital partner for certain companies, uh, you know, who uh, wants to get digital, and digital transformation is the right word actually. So, being part by sales. And the chief digital officer is COVID. <laughs> so, um, so uh, nevertheless, you know, in this last six months, I would say our sales and the number of leads and inquiries has shoot up two hundred percent. Especially the education sector, where uh, you know, um, and the um, health, uh, uh, we we call it ed tech companies. like uh, you know all those education uh, companies and universities they have technology they want to imbibe technology uh, uh, that is one industry which has boomed up a lot and where we are uh, getting every day in fact i would say that on every day since april april was a one peak season and may we were just giving the demos and talking about the consulting what we can do what we can what kind of a crm we can place for them what kind of a crm will talk and then omni channel presence of them uh, so that they can capture more leads more students more inquiries facilities and all that stuff uh, the second uh, industry which picked up very well as nupur was talking about is uh, health tech uh, or i would say healthcare industry is also uh, picked up pretty well especially in india and us definitely because a lot of inquiries from us started coming to india to us where they we should enable their crm on uh, you know and then uh, make them enable on sales force whether it's tough a whether it, uh, even if uh, their social presence on uh, social presence or it's their website or is that you know chat enablement chat bots artificial intelligence crm all that email marketing uh, you know so many tools which we have which we can which we enable uh, there are certain inquiries which were coming from the msme segment i was actually shocked uh, seeing that you know there was a one a small very small furniture shop and uh, they sent an inquiry to us saying that we want to get enable ourselves on uh, e-commerce platform so how can we uh, sell our furniture on e-commerce they are running a very shop small shop in delhi 
so you know the uh, you know, the kind of attitude now everybody even a small retailer shop attitude is there now where they want to get on online they want to sell online they know they cannot survive without digitalizing themselves so that's one major point which i think it industry uh, is enabling everybody uh, right now and that's one of the reason that you know our inquiries in the month of april may june has uh, increased 200% and the projects which are coming up uh, you know where we are enabling uh, different uh, you know industries on um, on the digital platforms is also been increased 20 to 30 percent where we have closed more number of uh, projects and also um, you know there are few veteran in this system who knows pretty well this pandemic is there for six months for 10 months or 12 months will go over where they were not able to uh, you know spend a lot of time on their business that time where they can implement a crm or a big digital transformation they can do they want to start now because they know this is a lull phase where the six months they can actually put more into a crm or implementation of it and thereafter you know by the time pandemic will be over next year 2021 their crm or their uh, you know digital uh, platform could be by the time you know it will be ready so okay. we uh, so definitely the increase or the shift uh, we have seen the shift in the uh, mindset of uh, from the small segment from the msme till the big enterprise also okay. there were people like who do, i'm sorry is there any question for me i have to take a very quick break but you can quickly complete your point yeah so that's the major point i would say uh, you know uh, to anurag and the team over here my uh, my uh, fellow members here that uh, it is enabling and it has boomed a lot uh, but nevertheless because it is only one like you know, who understand wfm work from home wfh who always understand that and they um, there was not a much impact when we, uh, when our resources were working from home or working from office doesn't make any impact to us but yes a lot of inquiries start coming in a lot of projects uh, getting enabled you know a lot of companies got enabled on um, you know or right. it technology or social platforms dr batra over to you Thank you so much, Uday. Uday, uh, what is key is, you know, there is a festivity in the air. That mm -hmm. means, at least temporarily, in some products and category, there will be demand. But the key question is, what happens post November? What happens in December, January, February, March? We know doctors are reluctant to meet patients. Patients are reluctant to go to doctors. So telemedicine grew. But uh, when we have a choice, will telemedicine will grow the same level? Have we created a digital divide in rural India and urban India, or has telemedicine kind of bridged that? These are questions that kind of uh, keep me awake, so to say. And let me ask all the panelists two questions: One, what have been their top lockdown lessons? Top two, three lockdown lessons. What have they learned that will hold them in good stead throughout their span as a career in, in entrepreneurship second is when do they see the indian economy coming back in full bloom 6 months 12 months or 18 months or even longer and i would like them to qualify their answer so let me start with mr man first uh, of all what are been your three three lockdown lessons or two okay. lockdown lessons i uh Mr. Batra, we forgot the music industry. So whenever you are, Sinmay, thank you for joining. <laughs> we can start with you. I know as a as a creative entrepreneur, as a cultural entrepreneur, the events domain was devastated. And last six months, everyone took to online to virtual concerts. So so tell us how has been your uh, journey in the last six seven months, and right. how is your industry grappling with it? Yeah, so I'm Shinmay Tripathi, and I'm founder of something called Music and Poetry Project, and uh, I basically produce music based on Indian poetry. I'm I'm a musician and the founder. So uh, it's been very difficult in the last six months for Indian music industry, if you have to say, because if you take the music industry, it has the film industry as well as the non-film industry, film music industry, which. constitutes about 80% of the total music industry uh, roughly around 1500 plus crores uh, but over the last 6 7 months there are no film shoots going on and uh, uh, also all the recordings in studios have been shut 
so studios were all shut down all the artists technicians session musicians if you have to see all have been unemployed uh and uh, so therefore there has been no money uh, as far as the musicians are concerned and uh, when it comes to the non film music they largely rely on events and there are no events which have been happening so most of them have tried to move to maybe online concerts uh, which have seen a huge surge over the last 6 months and uh, the, the live events we don't see you know happening any time between the mid of maybe next year so we all have to adapt and look for different kinds of opportunities now which which are you know different from earlier live events or some other kind of uh, you know live sessions because everybody is now recording and uh, uh, doing their shoots from home so uh, everything is happening from at home uh, and uh, as far as music is concerned most of the studios have now moved to home studios most of the composers are working from their home studios uh, i know a lot of studios in mumbai which were shut down they tried to reopen but then they again had to shut down because of you know some or the other problem or someone falling sick so it has been a very difficult time the only silver lining has been that you know ott platforms have grown tremendously and uh, you know platforms like uh, amazon prime or uh, netflix have seen you know their subscriber base doubling actually yes. in this time yeah you know so uh, apart from of course being a, what, apart from of course like being a musician know, yeah say if your income was at 100 rupees yeah in march i mean not 100 rupees i'm sure you made much more than <laughs> many any 100 rupees but if it was 100 uh, where does it come down to and whatever you're making like you talk about virtual concert you talk about ott i know that shoots have started in a limited way yeah. in, a very in the last few yeah. weeks but that's not good enough because cinemas are closed so yeah. ott is uh, will be an outlet for content yes. and movies but it's not the same so give a sense of what do you think is the loss to this in earth no and also how have you how how have you made your venture adapt to it as well because apart from being a musician you're also the founder of a venture so how has your venture adapted to this new normal as well and of course uh, yes uh, what's been the kind of impact uh, you know monetarily as as dr batra was just mentioning yes so uh, basically over the last 6 months everybody has tried to focus more on online streaming and video content creation and Uh, you know running their work or their music through uh, videos videos and streaming platforms so there has definitely be a uh, you know there has been some kind of increase as far as streaming is concerned and video consumption has uh, is concerned uh, and i know a lot of artists are also doing live concerts which are online now it is very little compared to what it was earlier not even like 20% of the market is there when it comes to online uh, live events because we have not really developed it like that we have not developed so many ticketing models and we have not worked around the entire end to end solution for artists to do live events online uh, but they are still they are still doing certain gigs online and uh, streaming and video streaming on audio streaming video streaming is helping us you know stay afloat uh, as far as uh, i can say about advertising because me and my partner are also into creating jingles for advertising so it has come to something like 20% of what it was uh, before 6 months so on monthly basis now it is just 15 to 20% of what we were producing or what we were generating in terms of revenue before covid so it has been very low but the good thing is that advertising is still going on and it has not died out it has uh, it has been there and now we are seeing some kind of uh, momentum growing because of the festival season so people are creating ads people are creating music for advertising and mostly work is happening from home home studios thank you so much chennai hopefully over the next 2 3 months uh, events will be back So from 15th October, the government is allowed, the MHA is allowed B2B exhibitions and B2B events because they create uh, commerce and business. But not sure how many will be back by 15th October. But by November, December, I do expect that uh, events will be brought back in some way. 
I'll ask Mr. Mahan, what are your top two, three lockdown lessons? Um, um, I think it's a um, good question. Uh, so, in fact, very good question. So, uh, the two, three, uh, I would say there are a lot of lessons being learned. Um, we need to be up to the speed of the customer. And we do not uh, think about the future aspect. So, when we... So you're uh, saying one is speed and agility matters. Second, you think short term, uh, long term planning doesn't really work. Yeah. Third, so CBS future, brevity is the soul of the wit. So, shorter answers. Uh, and the global mindset, sir. Global so you are mindset. saying just, just don't think about India, think about uh, what you can do for the world. And tell us when do you see the Indian economy to be back fully? It's very hard to say because I was just, um, um, you know, going through a few of the articles there. It was just, um, you know, it is not. What is your sense from whatever, when you talk to your customers, when you see the ecosystem, what's your own personal sense? At least, uh, you know, reviving, uh, reviving back, uh, reviving back uh, to what the uh, being normal or leading through the change will take another, you know, 10, 12 months for us to, uh, you know, back to normal. It would not be so easy because, uh, um, I mean, um, already minus 5.2%, it was there. And, but if you uh, see the last one month, uh, we've gone down from 24 to 10. So we clearly can see impro economy improving. The green, green shoots are visible. So that's already available. But you're saying 10 to 12 months. Mr. Sharma, what are your top lockdown lessons? And when do you see the economy back in full bloom? Uh, uh, the first lesson is, at least in my industry, from that standpoint, is uh, virtual tryouts, investing more on technologies in, in terms of, you know, understanding the consumer behavior, understanding where the consumer is coming from, what are the expectations, the new expectations post-COVID. So that's the first uh, lesson that we have figured out. The second is expand globally. We have, I mean, just to give you an idea, we have already expanded out to the United States. Uh, we have we used this opportunity to take our product, our service, our, our offering to the United States uh, through our e-commerce platform and we are, will be launching an app soon and that particular app will have a virtual tryout facility using AR technologies we talked about, the augmented reality where you could just point and shoot and, and you know, see how a product will look on you and, and that is, that is the, right? So and the third one would be... Economy back. Uh, uh, I personally believe that it will take between 6 and 12 months for it to be back. It also depends on when the vaccine will be out. Depending on when the vaccine is out, I mean, the genie is out of the bottle then, right? I mean, you could be looking at people just taking vaccine and going back to work, uh, things going to normal much faster. So the variable that I see there is the vaccine. Uh, the third, uh, just, just one more thing uh, that I think believe, I believe is more important for everybody to understand is have one source of income purely digital. If your part if your income depends on something physical, a physical product, a physical service, uh, it requires you to travel a lot physically, then that might actually see, because more, I, I personally believe that this is not the first time or this is not the last time this is gonna happen. With more biologically active world, this might happen again in a different form altogether, right? So you should have something that purely runs on the internet and if you can diversify your income streams, that one thing, I think I think it will be a good thing for everyone. Uh, sir, in this uh, lesson we got, when you are not able to go out, go inside. So we checked our internal processes, we checked our technology and we checked which are the things which are uh, bottlenecks for the scalability. So we came out with a few new technologies. One of the things I would like to share here, we developed an EJ photo app. In being the omni-channel marketplace and being the aggregator of the jewelers, the biggest challenge of a jewelry photograph, jewelry is the photograph itself. The digitization of the jewelry, my biggest challenge is the digitization. Digital so we catalog. know this digital catalog. So, so, yeah, so in the cataloging. So this is a very huge cost. It is very costly and it is a very time consuming. So we uh, develop an EJF photo solution, which is available on iPhone with the photography can be photoshot in few seconds and directly it can go to our server without zero editing. So we reduce the whole cost completely free to our jewelers as well as, you know, the whole editing time, which is two to three weeks. You are saying, wow. saying be innovative, come up with new solutions. Yes, yes. Go so this, yeah. Go with and it. And when so do you see the economy to be back fully? Uh, I, think, I think it will take somewhere 6 to uh, 12 months. I agree with uh, Ambos. Uh, it, it is somewhere in between it is going to take. It is not going to be very time soon. And that definitely it has a dependability on the vaccine. So many countries are claiming, including India, uh, let's see you know, what finally comes out. But somewhere between 6 to 12 months, we should be uh, back to normal, which we used to be. 
Mukund, uh, your top lockdown lessons. Yes. Uh, they sorry. can be philosophical. They don't have to be about <laughs> bringing out a new product. Uh, yeah. For example, yeah. mine are less is more. Never say never. Go within. Um, roti, R O T I. Find return on time invested. And last, this shall to pass. You know, nothing is permanent. We know it shall. So, tell me yours, Mukund. I think for for us, uh, the key learning was that you have as a as a company or as any business, you have to be agile. You have to be proactive in your approach. So if any crisis situation hits you, you have to be so agile that you're able to pivot quickly and you're able to uh, you know cater to the new needs, right? So that would definitely be the key. The speed learning. of response yes. has to be faster than it ever was. Yes. I mean, agility That's sounds true. very good, yeah. but at the end of the day, it is not as easy. Yeah, as it sounds. What else? So this is definitely uh, my key learning, and uh, for the company as a whole, I I would say. Uh, also, uh, before I talk about uh, what the recovery path would look like, uh, I would like to answer your question. You after the break, you pointed out that uh, you know doctors today are consulting uh, virtually, but what after three months, six months, right? So uh, one thing that I've learned from the pandemic is that the behavioral change that has happened during this period is something that is here to stay. and it is not just for healthcare industry per se but also other industries that have taken a hit be it at tech companies or you know how uh, people have started people have changed their way of uh, doing things that is your to say so there, there is a behavior change when it comes to consumer but uh, no put the key is post the pandemic or whenever it tapers down we we'll have to see what behaviors are permanent and what behaviors are temporary you know, right. right now we have a compulsion the real test to a behavior will be when we have a choice yeah uh, so i i don't think the jury is out on that mm. and there i say the more we embrace technology the more heart grows fonder mm. for physical touch for face to face interaction for a cup of coffee uh, with your colleague and yeah. again you know from work from home i have done work from anywhere i call it wfa flexi work but not <laughs> everyone is motivated enough motivated enough to be able to produce a lot from home and in some cases they may not have a large enough homes imagine as in anglo where husband wife are working they have two yeah. kids so you yeah. need four different rooms just to be able to conduct each one's work i have a colleague who comes to my home every day work from my home because mm. he says he cannot work from his home because mm. you know his devices are busy his home his rooms are busy mm. uh, so clearly and he feels that getting out of home gets him more work yeah. so there is a different strokes for different folks right. let me bring in um, chinmay chinmay what have been your top lockdown lessons uh, what will hold you in good stead throughout your life and when do you see the economy coming back and by that corollary the events in the music industry coming back chinmay my lessons yeah my lessons have been that you know diversify and have multiple sources of revenue as far as possible uh, do not put all your eggs into one basket and uh, adapt whenever there is a crisis there will be something new that you can do so adapt as much as you can and find the opportunity in the crisis so these are the fantastic things. i keep saying that you know whenever it's raining look for the rainbows whenever it's dark look for the stars i mean we are blessed we have our homes we have shelter we have food we have an opportunity to Grow our company, so we are clearly blessed. Uh, we only have to give gratitude. But yes. Nupur, you wanted to make a point about digital haves and have-nots, and uh, you know what yeah. is happening to telehealthcare. Yeah. Just to give our viewers the statistics, uh, the healthcare industry in the last seven months, the organized healthcare industry has lost more than two billion dollars. The unorganized healthcare industry, which is your neighborhood GP, uh, if you combine them, another five hundred million dollars. so yeah. the health of the healthcare providers is, from a financial standpoint is fragile yeah uh, it is can telly medicine come yeah. to the rescue nupur uh, you wanted to make a point uh yes so it i mean i'm not saying that there will be a situation where the entire opd practice will be converted into say telly medicine right but it is more like a demonetization moment for the healthcare industry where we have realized that even virtual care can be a part of the process per se right so that is something that uh, we'll witness in even in the coming months once we have the 
a vaccine out as well and there is a proper v-shape recovery happening there is uh, no restriction of the movement you would still see a lot of patients consulting their doctors online because now they've realized that that could be uh, a part of the care process so that is definitely something uh, which is going to change okay. uh, which has already changed and it is going to continuously changed uh, in the near future so that's and, a trend uh, that's a trend that's here to stay um, yeah, let's yeah. take let's Great. take that to the yeah. others as well on on you know other trends that they've observed in the last few months uh, in business that, that are here to stay. Mr. Man, do you want to come in there? So uh, definitely the behavioral change, you know, which Nipur also said and uh, the way, you know, the global mindset uh, of uh, everybody. So as I said, you know, um, uh, there is a definitely a mindset change which everybody's having nowadays. Even a small shopkeepers, everybody's, you know, going digital. And uh, which Anurang also rightly said, what is temporary and what is permanent right now? So yes, if uh, we can have a seriously, uh, you know, two hours debate on it, because that's always, uh, you know, from the business standpoint, whatever we try to do uh, in a particular crisis, that always remains with us for a longer period of time. And when we see my customers are coming to me through a chatbot, through my website, through social channels, through social ads, through telemedicine, or through any other ch uh, omni channels, then I will, obviously I will be try to uh, get the get those inquiries and leads and convert that into a business for sure so my i think that it's a kind of an investment which everybody uh, has actually understood that right platform and right technology is the key for any business to run uh here in india you know what we generally do is even uh, the especially the msmes we try to run the business uh, without technology when i tried comparing i'm sorry uh, i'm afraid like uh, just just try to give an example be it any other country like uk and us or states where the, even the uh, small msmes uh, always start with the technology technology first it's not because i'm from the technology that's the reason i'm pushing for it but technology is always an enabler in this crisis the one safe factor for every uh, you know where we are connected on zoom today the zoom you know the mark from march till uh, august and september the shares of Zoom has actually, uh, the same online platform has actually increased uh, multifolds. So a uh, technology enabler, and um, I, I think that's the only thing uh, which so I've not an enabler. Today, technology is a driver. Uh, every business has to be a tech business. Uh, we have to use technology to reimagine each business. Whether I'm in media, today business world site does 30 million traffic, plus growing with ambition to be 100 million in the next few months in all organic. Uh, and Mr. Sharma, the latest issue of BW Business World is a luxury issue. So you can pick it up or we can send it to you. So uh, uh, well, we, today I think we should, it, get, get, we should get everyone to give us a closing comment on where to they see their sectors going and the economy going. Let me start uh, with uh, uh, Nupur this time. Nupur, uh, if we talk to you 12 months from now, what do you think you would have achieved for your company? So, uh, 12 months from now, I think um, from from an overall perspective, per se, uh, there is going to be vaccines which will be out in uh, for the mass uh, use, and we will hopefully have a V-shaped recovery, right? And talking about my company, how there has been a significant push on an institutional level uh, from government will, with NDHN coming into place. I think uh, Navya is set to grow another 10 times uh, like it has in the last uh, couple of months. So we will have a complete digital uh, healthcare ecosystem, which probably is something that we have witnessed in developed countries. But uh, that is something that we'll also witness uh, in India. And Navya is going to be a significant part of it uh, while that is happening. So in my Tripathi, if I talk to you, we at NewsX talk to you in 12 right. months, where will you be? What would you have achieved? Like you said, have diversified sources of income. Give us a sense. Yes. Yeah. So I think overall, as far as music industry is concerned, there will be definitely many more players as far as music streaming is concerned. OTT platforms will continue to grow, I think. Hopefully, we'll have better bandwidth uh, in you know even smaller towns, smaller places better connectivity, better internet services, etc. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, again, because I started diversifying and started creating music, which was for uh, music licensing for short films, for uh, web series, etc. So I would continue to do that and focus more on other ways of earning and not focusing completely on live events. 
per se because you never know uh, you know when when they'll be out and the so live events will be a bonus but build a solid <laughs> stream uh, right so sharma um so we have realized that uh, you know even in luxury there are only there are, there are three things that sell for well, the first is the content the second is product and the third is service right so we have created our own erp system in house uh for luxury merchandise sellers and we will be rolling that out that's the first uh, business stream that I was talking about the second is the product itself i mean we have diversified out to the us we will be diversifying out to europe and we'll be doing a just in time inventory model from india outside to the world right the third piece is uh the content and we we are actually building a luxury media content platform there will be getting a lot of information from outside and curating it in a certain way that can be you know uh, available to the outside world specifically from luxury and it could be luxury travel luxury product luxury service all of it so diversifying out into all three things this is saying so uh, sir we already have uh, 230 jewelers on the website i think in 12 months we would reach to at least 600 700 jewelers choices we will bring to the consumer we already have 30000 plus products choices for the consumer today we perhaps in 12 months we can double it at least uh, there should be more than 60000 plus plus products uh, choices would be available to the consumers in the comfort of the home with which we will aggregate from all over india and the best thing happened in this uh, covid period the whole industry has realized somewhere the jewelry industry was remaining behind in terms of adopting of the technology as well as you know have, having the benefit of the online presence so industry has realized and the you know the virtual exhibitions have been started for b2b as well and and every jeweler have understood that they have to create their online presence it can be 5% of their business or 50% of the part of the business it's a secondary but they will have to have their online presence and they have to have their some part of the business coming from the online space so that is the uh, lesson of the whole industry has got along with us thank you so much final word mr man so uh, um it will be um 2 to 3x of growth especially in the it sector i would say and the uh, after 12 months we'll be seeing more resources uh, to be upskilled in terms of our cross skills also which we have learned and after 12 months will we have will be having more resources in terms of which will be cross skilled on different platforms so that they will be able to take care of other projects as well it's not just one technology and definitely the you know uh, who or i would say attraction for the uh, you know a uh, foreign investments uh, also coming and so the global mindset after 12 months would be there more where we will be doing uh, more business into the us and canada as well so especially on the it sector there you know we will be enabling more enabling is a drug that are driving more and more business into uh, different countries as well we at bw business world and newsx wish you all the best back to you there if you want to Still yes so. uh, but, uh, you know we were talking of course about those uh, those trends that are here to stay i think mr man answer that let's get the others also uh, to weigh in on that on you know on a trend in their sector or generally in the market that's here to stay uh, jitendra singh do you want to weigh in there okay uh, so uh, industry has been seeing the walk ins to the store has gone down but industry has seen the conversion percentage of that uh, walk ins are much higher than they used to be Mm -hmm. so what we are seeing a sharply decline in the into the window shopping of the consumers in the jewelry space you know so people can go to malls for the window shopping but how many times you will have entered inside the jewelry store for the window shopping that is a very less likely to happen so that is a sharply decline into the window shopping and and that is what the people can discover and research about the product or the jewelry they are looking for they can do online and the final transaction may happen online or the offline at both the places So I think that the industry, as well as the uh, you know, we are seeing the consumers are uh, reading for that. Okay, we're completely out of time, so let's leave it at that. My thanks to all of our guests for joining us on this edition of the NewsX and Business World panels on the Indian economy. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.